Okay, so enough of the B-roll of the 14 to 42. Let's talk about functionality. And the first thing that we want to definitely test is autofocus capability paired up with image stabilization. Now I'm currently filming 8-bit. Uh, we're doing autofocus face tracking. What I'm looking for here, how's the stabilization on the Panasonic GH5? And we'll do a little bit of a, kind of like a jog. Give you guys, what would that be? And kind of just, Want to get y'all's feedback? Are we getting warping? Is the autofocus working pretty solid? So now that we have an understanding of how the auto face tracking performs outside while walking and talking, let's go ahead and put it in more of a traditional environment or a studio environment. We'll be using the speed, we'll be set at a plus two, and the sensitivity set at negative one. And we're first gonna start off with auto face tracking. And so what we're looking for here is it keeping me in focus while I'm moving my hands? Is it sharp or is it kind of searching back and forth? Maybe kind of going between the lights behind me and myself. Now what you can see right now is I'm actually moving side by side and from what we can tell, it looks like the auto face tracking is working pretty well. And I'm excited to see exactly how this looks in post-production. Next up, we're gonna be testing the autofocus, what Panasonic considers the 225 area. Now in my experience, this basically is a setting that's going to kind of put everything in focus and adjust to what the camera believes is the best thing to be in focus. Now what I'm looking for here, similar to the auto face tracking is, is it going to follow me? Is it staying with me? Or is it constantly hunting between myself and the background? Now, as you guys can see, I've gotten closer. We have the beer bottle, it's in focus. Hopefully when we remove it, it then pulls focus to me drinking it. And we will hopefully see, can it pick up now the GoPro? And when I remove the GoPro, does it then track back to myself? And once again, with the Panasonic GH5, we are looking to see if the autofocus paired up with the 14 to 24 is a valuable option for most users. And I'd love to get your feedback in regards to how do you think the autofocus is functioning so far, both outside and inside. So for the final test of this lens, I really just wanna do a quick B-roll montage, experimenting with all the different frame rates on the Panasonic GH5. That way that you guys can get a better understanding of what kind of footage you're gonna get out of this. Now, one small disclaimer, just so you guys are aware, I am shooting with an ND filter, which I kind of prefer to use in regards to shooting outside. It tends to kind of lock in my colors and it gives me more flexibility in post-production in regards to not shooting things overexposed. So let's shoot some B-roll and give you guys a taste of what this 14 to 42 has to offer. Now when we're kind of talking about the Panasonic GH5 and we're talking about glass, there's going to be an absolute assortment of glass that you can put on these cameras, especially considering the adapters they now have for the Micro Four Thirds. You basically can put on the Canon glass, you can put Sigma glass, you name it. Now the reason I chose this $99 lens to kind of do a review of is over the past few years I've spent an absorbent amount of money on different kinds of glass and I've been thoroughly impressed with this $99 piece of glass for several reasons. One, the obvious one being the price. And the second being, it's actually super lightweight and it has a wide angle for what I would consider micro four thirds. I own the 7.5 broken on wide angle lens, which is actually fisheye. And while that is absolutely super wide, this 14 to 42 does a very good job of kind of getting the wide enough shots, especially for people that are vloggers or people that are kind of just getting out there and doing travel style videos. One downfall to this piece of glass is its low light capabilities, but as you guys can see outside, it's pretty solid in regards to how it's functioning, how it's capable of really handling any of light situations. Now, if I happen to hop back up in the studio, it might be a little bit of a different scenario, but in controlled environments, I can add more light, which inevitably makes this lens usable as well. And with the autofocus capabilities that I seem to think are pretty good, I actually find this lens to come in handy a lot more than you would think. Now, for those that are doing this professionally or this is your career, this might not be a lens that you would probably want in your bag to take on a professional shoot. But if you're traveling or like myself, just shooting YouTube videos, it's a perfect fit. It gives you a wide assortment of kind of focal ranges and 
honestly, it's light as can be and for $100 if it got destroyed, it's no big deal. One other concern I do have with the lens is going to be its actual zoom as far as the smoothness of the zoom. Now I did buy this lens used, but it is not that great and that's kind of to be expected coming in at $100. And then as far as the focus goes, it's another one of those focus by wire. So it sometimes seems to have a little bit of lag, but for the most part, it pulls focus relatively well. And if I were gonna recommend this to someone to buy, this would definitely be for someone out there that doesn't wanna break the bank, that maybe has a couple of other lens options. I wouldn't want this to be my one and only. Simply put, just because of the low f-stop being uh, the lowest being f3.5, it really just does not give me the blurry backgrounds that I want in a lot of situations. So just take that in consideration. This $100 lens from Lumex, the 14 to 42, has been absolutely great. And I recommend you go online, maybe add a Rama or B&H, look at it used or refurbished. And hey guys, it's Trey Lowell with Lowell Productions. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like the content I keep creating on this channel, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.